Hello everybody and welcome to the Zookeepers Animal Pack. So there are seven animals in this pack, as well as the African Leopard, which was added in the free update 1.18 for Planet Zoo's fifth anniversary, which we are celebrating to well, not today. Um, I'm recording this a little bit late, but we've got a good few animals to check out and I'm not going to go in any particular order, so let's have a look at our African Spur Tortoises. So this, oh, there's a better one. Um, so, the African Spur Tortoise, also known as the Salcata Tortoise, is the third largest tortoise in the world. And it's really great that we've finally got it in the game. We haven't had a Habitat Tortoise for so long. And Frontier honestly never disappoints with their reptiles. At least since the base game. But, the African Spur Tortoise looks fantastic. I love the details on the shell here. Looks absolutely fantastic. I've seen an African Spur Tortoise in real life and I can tell you it looks just like this. Really happy that we've got a tortoise that isn't one of the giant tortoises from the islands. Oh, there's one in the light. And of course they are walkthroughs, so you can have your guests walking through the same habitat. They also use uh, the burrow, which trying to remember where I put that, if I even put it in here. Oh, I don't even think I put it in here. There is hard shelter there that I've just discovered. No, but they can actually use the burrow. So it's the large burrow, not the small burrow for obvious reasons. But yeah, these guys are really cool. They do have interspecies enrichment with the Dharma Gazelle, so I go and find African Spur Tortoise. They are endangered. Unfortunately, the Sahel region of Africa is a very vulnerable place, as you can see here. They're found all across it, from east to west, and even a little bit of Yemen, which is interesting. You can only have, uh, you can have up to eight of these tortoises in one habitat, so three males and seven females. A male bachelor group is three, and female bachelor group is eight. They can have two to six offspring. They're very easy to reproduce in captivity. They can weigh, males can weigh 60 kilos. Now they live for 60 years. Huh, thought they'd live longer than that. I don't know. Well, they're certainly detailed animals, and I'm really happy we finally got another habitat tortoise. Oh, going to sleep. I thought they would actually tuck, them, tuck their heads back into their shells. I guess not. Well, uh, oh, damn it. Okay, let's go check out our, one of our other African species, the Kirk Dictic, if I can find it. There's one just sleeping. Yeah, so they are a very small antelope. I'll see if I can find one that's actually awake. Let's see. Um, where, where would it be? Let's just check with the habitat, right? Uh, ah, here we go. So they generally just live in pairs, so it's a male and a female, and they mate for life. I've got a couple more in here just to make sure we could see them. And that's a pretty good shot, if you don't mind me asking. But yeah, they are a very cool little antelope with lots of little dynamic twitches and movements that really set them apart from a lot of the other antelope. Not to mention the fact that they are tiny. The babies, if we were to have any in this habitat, which I don't believe we do, would not even be taller than the buffalo grass. But yeah, these guys don't actually have interspecies enrichment, which is understandable. They're not like all the other antelope. They don't live in large herds or with many other animals. They'll generally hide in the scrub to keep our sight from predators. And uh, yeah, I mean, you could put them with something if you wanted to. Like, you could potentially put them with bongo antelope or an okapi just to add some more animals in there, but they are, whoa, speedy. Yeah, so, Dick Dick is really interesting. Um, they also have, have a flexible nose, much like the Saiga that we got in Eurasia pack. And massive eyes too. They're very fun to watch. He, certainly one of my um, little favorites of the pack. Uh, we also do have signs for each of these animals, so you've got Tortoise sign just there, and the dick dick here. Let's go talk about the Markor. So, got a goat mountain just in case they wanted to use it. 
but this is the Markor, the largest wild goat in the world, and they certainly have some of the largest horns of any wild goat too. But I know a lot of people have sort of suggested that it's too neatly kept on the beard, but these Markor are in captivity, so they're not necessarily um, having all the things going on in the wild that would make that beard less well kept. And you got to go for a general model. Like, not every Markor is going to have a shaggy beard or anything like that. Like, I heard similar things about the Hammerdryas baboon. In that case, Hammerdryas baboons do spend a lot of time grooming. So they're very well kept. Oh, we've got a, we got a kid. Oh, look at him. A little darling. Absolutely gorgeous. And you got the females here too. Now, initially, um, people thought they were just going to be like regular goats, but they do have the twist that female Markor do in their horns, as well as the little beard on the chin there. Oh, that's just them walking on different rocks. Okay. I love the sound, though. Like, you can hear them clip-clopping along the rocks. But the male Markor looks pretty good. And, I, and I've seen, I've heard, uh, was it Leaf, say that the eyes were too too low and I've looked at images of Markor and they look like they're in the right spot to me um, but yeah I really like the Markor personally I don't think much would need to be changed to it some some more diverse uh, coat variations would be nice if there was like um, like a saddleback or something or, um, over here something like that. that that would be what I would suggest there may be some other colour variations in the beard I know the Markor mod had some different variations um, I'm not sure which mark or this is based off of though it could just be a general mark or uh, subspecies but I'm, I'm not sure which one it is it, it is just Capra of Falconeri but uh, yeah there are there are many different subspecies of mark or so this may be the Bukharan um, mark or um, although I, I think there's a Tajik mark or as well but uh, yeah, there's many different types, but I feel like this is just a general mark or variety. Just clipping inside each other there. But yeah, mark or looks fantastic. What do you think of it? Uh, it'll certainly complete my Madagascan areas. Uh, Madagascan Himalayan areas. I was looking at the Safaka image. We'll get to them in a sec. Let's go have a look at the grumpiest cat in the world. The palace's cat. So this is Ulagan. Now, a lot of people did think that the Palace's Cat did look too good um, on the initial key art released and key art that has stuck around, but looking at it, it honestly doesn't look too bad. And it is what I was somewhat suspecting, that it was squinting um, in the art that it was in. I love how it's got these little um, lighter paws. But one, one behavior that I know a lot of people wanted them to do was where they sit on their tails when their feet are cold. But given that the palace's cat isn't always going to be displayed in a cold environment in your zoos, um, it's probably not necessary, but it would have been a nice touch to add in. But I'm not too fussed, to be fair. But I, I think the face looks fine. Like, the palace's cat's face, I don't think it needs too much of a touch-up. But I know a lot of people like to say that uh, it doesn't look quite right, but uh, honestly... I don't really see too much of a problem in it. I think it looks just fine to me. Um, where's another one? They do use this uh, bubble enrichment as well. It took me a little while to get that working, just to sit there and not bring up the rest of the terrain around it. Where is the other palace cat? Oh, there! Oh, there's a kitten. A couple of kittens. And the kittens look a little. I mean, I gonna say necessarily strange they just look a lot angrier than you would think those white eyebrows make them look really angry Ooh. oh animation not quite working just there but it is a very dynamic animation when it works perfectly oh we got three little kittens that's wonderful Okay, moving on. Let's go find the spectacled bear. Oh, we got cubs too. Sweet. 
Okay, so this is the only South American animal we got in this pack, but honestly, it's what I was actually wanting the most because it's we we have not had a lot of diversity in the Andean mountains for a long while, and really we've only had the the cougar, the llama, and the alpaca for the longest time. It's it's great that we've now got a spectacle bear because that's pretty much the quintessential Andean animal. Unless you think the condor is, I'm not sure, but um, having the spectacle bear here is really good. We only have one bear species left until we've completed the family. The American black bear, that is. But yeah, it's really nice how they've also changed the model that it doesn't look just like the regular, like some of the other bears. I think it does use the sloth bear rig um, or just m much of the animation set, although they do have a few differences in there. But it removes the hump at the back that is uh, seen on many of the base game bears like the grizzly and the Himalayan brown so um, it's good that it's got a distinct silhouette and there are a few variations in this face mark uh, facial markings um, I'm not sure if we've got too many differences here uh, yep we do so this one has got a more partial uh, mask and this one's got a complete one there are only three varieties, I think, of the face markings. I think one just removes the, those side bits altogether. Oh no, I think it's that. Uh, or it's just a single spot above the eye. But um, there was a variation of the Spectacle Bear that I'd heard of that I was actually kind of wanting to have in the game, which sort of has an orange coloration um, for the face pattern and somewhat grayer fur. But we didn't get that in the game. One of the... The only animals that got color variations, I think, were the Markor and the African Leopard. Everything else... Oh, no, it's about Palace's Cat did, too. It got a golden uh, variety. But other than that, most of the other animals in this pack have um, largely the same coloration. Look at him. Has the food actually come down? Oh, there we go. Yeah, so special bears are largely herbivores. And they will occasionally eat meat. And as you can see here, they've got a little bit of meat in there, but it's primarily vegetation, which is a nice detail. Get a close look at the cub. Oh, the periwinkle's floating. Oh, look at him. Precious. He's adorable. I just fix that, even though I'm not really going to be returning to the zoo too often. I'm just going to fix that anyway. Oh, and the buffalo grass too. Oh, whatever. Okay, so that's the spectacle bear. Let's go see our Hamadryas baboons. Which are probably one of the more useful animals in this pack for me personally. As, like, Hamadryas baboons are very widespread in captivity. And it's great that we finally got a true baboon. Now, I think it is a modified uh, mandrel rig because they do walk in a very similar w way. They've just got... Um, tails that can move and um, a variety of different animations that make them distinct. Like they do, the males will um, have a bit of a yawn um, on occasion, but I don't think we're going to get that here. But we've got um, a couple of little babies here too, with their big smiling faces. Uh, we've also got our females here that don't have the same silver mantle that the males possess. Yeah, the male baboon looks fantastic. I really like how he looks. Oh. Okay, that's one thing that we do need in Planet Zoo 2, a revised climbing system. Um, but, yeah, the baboons look really good. Um, they use a lot of the different items. Oh, this is, the, this is the jelly cake, which is only for vegetarians, unfortunately. We don't have a um, carnivorous variety that can be given to all the predatory animals that you can have in your zoos. Which is a bit of a shame, but um, it's great that we can at least give it to a lot of the animals that do exist in the game. Oh, is this how they sleep? Wow. Yeah, I, I do like the coat though. The coat looks really good in my opinion. It, it looks just like the Hammerdrives baboons I've seen, so I think that's, that's a win in itself. Um, yeah, I'll save my favourite till last. Let's go have a look at our African leopards. So, oh, we may actually see the leopard 
Um, explore a little bit. Oh, climb the tree. That's one way to get to the climb platform. But the African leopard is our free anniversary animal and it looks fantastic. It's probably one of the best looking cats in the game, actually. Oh, it looks very accurate to the real animal. And it's, it's great that we've got a leopard that can be used in... I'm just going to double check this. That lives in grasslands and tropical areas. Because the animal leopard does not. But, oh, hang on. We got three adults. Okay, that's not too good. Uh, okay. See you, Sada. <laughs> okay. So I think these leopard cubs may grow up in a sec. Because they're... I don't know. They're newer. Oh, there we go. There's the other cub. Jafari. Okay. Now, I'm pretty sure that's all of them. So the African Leopard does come in a good few varieties, so there is a Erythristic version, which is the Strawberry Leopard, and also a Black Leopard, but um, I wasn't able to get any of these, although I could check the Trade Center, and just have a look. Oh, whoops. Yep, none. Look at this little cup having a go. Oh, leap right over that. But yeah, I love the variety in the rosettes on the, on the coat. It looks really nice. And it's great that we were able to get one last big cat. I would have loved a Sumatran tiger, but an African leopard was certainly much more wanted by the community. As, yeah, it's a true leopard that lives in a variety of different habitats. Whereas if it got a Sumatran tiger, you'd really only be able to keep that in grasslands and tropical biomes as well. But Matching this with the Ammo Leopard. We've got a very diverse set of leopards. Okay. Um, let's go have a look at my favourite animal of the pack. The Cockerel Safarkas, which live over here. In this rather nice habitat that we've got for them. And a lot of people were worried that they weren't going to be able to do this. The hopping behaviour. Can... There we go. Look at them go. We can get a cinematic shot. Oh, playing football with the box. Yeah, the Safakas do all the behaviours that I wanted them to do. So, like, occasionally they'll, um, while they're sitting, they'll whip around and scope out their surroundings, like they do. But yeah, we've got this hopping behaviour. Like, the angle that we were given really did not do these animals justice. And, yeah, they've got the, the tails long enough. They do the jumps. They're pretty much perfect. They're, they look just like Zabumafu, for those who used to watch that as a kid. But, yeah, it's really great to have these guys in the game. Like, next to the II, these guys were the next um, lemur that I really wanted. And we're at the top of my wish list. And, oh, there we go. Yeah, I'm really happy with these guys. They do everything that I ever hoped for them. And I'm certainly going to be using these in an upcoming zoo build that I'm planning to do. Oh, look at that. That's a social interaction. Let's have a look at the little baba. Absolutely adorable. Having a hop around. Oh, look at him. Oh, whoops. I should have paused it a little bit earlier. Yeah, it's really fun just watching them hop around. Now, when they climb, they do run around on all fours. But, um, I mean, that's just the most effective way to get around. Like, they do share some animations with the le with the other lemurs. But, then again, lemurs are somewhat universal in the way they will move. Except for the safaka along the ground. Like, at least in the way they move along the ground. I do have quite a lot in here, though. <laughs> Whee! A superhero jump. Yes, yeah, so there we go. Clambering around. Yeah, I could watch these guys forever. But they're just so fun to just sit back and watch as they just move around effortlessly. 
Okay, that is the Zookeeper's Animal Pack. Now, there are a bunch of pieces, and I'm sure you would have seen them in a lot of um, other YouTubers' videos before this. But I really just focused on the animals. Um, for me, it, it's not really about the scenery, it's about the animals, but that's just me. <laughs> but there is a lot of good scenery. So, there are some metal poles. There are these flowers, which I certainly don't see myself using. But we do have various... Uh, metal poles here, which I think will certainly come in handy when um, building like overhead tunnels. Like, yeah, that in particular. That will do wonders for creating overhead pathways for animals. And like putting the mesh in between, that will work just fine. Yeah, I'm really excited to test that out. Oh, wait, what? We did have a baby? Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> wait, let's see. Siblings. <gasps> you might actually be able to see it before it grows up. Uh, where are you? Oh my god, it's tiny. The bracken's in the way though. Okay, bye bracken. And the. There we go. Little Nemono. It is so small. It's barely. A... It, it is not above the grass at all. Wow. What a wonderful little animal. Yeah, I thought we'd get a good look at the um, little dick dick there. So, yeah, but that is the pack. So each animal comes with its own signs. And from what I've seen, even though some of them you would consider a clone animal, they do have a lot of unique behaviors. So let me know in the comments what you think of this pack and the animals in it, how you would rank the animals in this pack and um, yeah I'll see you all in the next video where we'll probably be speculating Planet Zoo 2. Anyway I'll see you all then. Bye bye.